Hey, what's up guys? It's Codebra from codingwithcodebra.com. And I got a message asking about the static keyword in Swift and it's pretty simple. So I thought I'd go over it quickly with some practical examples. So in object oriented programming languages, you can create classes and sometimes even structures. So we have structs in Swift. And what we can do is we can create instances of these classes by using its initializer. So you've definitely done this before. So we can say, we can make a Frank user. So we'll say let Frank equals user. And then we're going to input Frank's info. So name is Frank, email is frank at gmail.com, age is 21. Now you can only access these variables if you've created an instance. And then you can do frank.age or frank.email or we might even have a setter where we return the age. So we can say frank.getAge. And if we run that, we'll get his age email and, uh, oh, I meant name, sorry. But anyways, same difference. So we can get Frank's information that way. So for example, we could just even create a user and then just grab that email just from that instance. So this is an instance, okay? And the reason that we can only grab these variables from an instance is because these variables are usually specific to that instance. So Frank's name and his email are specific to him. So what static variables and functions are, is they are variables and functions that can be accessed without creating an instance to that class. So if we tried to look here, if we tried to say Frank.species, I can't get that because it's a static variable. So the way that we do that is we'd say user dot species. And note here, we're not using a constructor and making an, ins making an instance. We're just using the user uh, object and we're not actually creating anything. And if we run that, we'll get human. So even in here, this function, get age, this is not a static function. So if we try to access species, we can't, we can't access a static variable from inside an instance. So the way that we do this is we could say static func get species, and then we can, we need to return a string, and then we re can return species. We can even say self.species, self.species. So if we do user.getspecies, we can call that, and it will return us our human string. And we can't call that get species from the Frank instance. So I'm gonna give you guys some examples of where this is actually useful in code, where you're actually gonna write it. And the first one that we have is a table view cell. So if you've watched any of my videos where we make a table view, you'll notice we always create a custom table view cell and we make a static let identifier. So the reason why we do that is because when we create our table view, we need to register our table view cell and it asks for an identifier. So instead, instead of making this just a normal let, right? Instead of having to initialize this cell every time we do this, we just make it static so we don't actually have to initialize the object. So another time that we might use this in an app is when we have a constants file. So for example, say we want to display our website in an app multiple times. This website URL is never gonna change, it's a constant. And instead of every single time, we need to grab this website string. Instead of saying constants and initializing it and creating an object, putting an object into memory and then calling website URL, all we need to say is just constants.website URL. Because when you're creating this object, you're making an instance and it's putting it in memory. It might get rid of it quickly, but you're still creating it and putting it in memory. So this is just an easier way of just grabbing that website URL without going through all the hassle. So the last place that we're gonna use it, especially with uh, functions, is helper classes or uh, some kind of like manager classes. So one example, easy example, is an alert manager. Say we're going to be showing alerts in multiple different places in our app, 
And the this class can be very non-specific. So we can pass in a title and what view controller we want to show that alert on. Why would we always, every single time, have just make the alert manager? We're gonna be making this in multiple different view controllers in our app. So do we want to initialize an object for an alert manager in every single view controller? Or do we just wanna make a, a static little helper function where we can just say alert manager dot show alert, and then we can just pass in the title and the view controller. Now you could, I don't want to say that you couldn't create an instance of alert manager in every single class, but this is just like a cleaner, nicer way to do it. All you have to do is call just alert manager dot show alert, pass in the information and that function will take care of it for you. So hopefully that makes sense to you. I think the main takeaway that will help you understand it is normal variables and functions are usually specific to a certain instance. So it's specific to a certain user, to a certain view controller or something. It's some kind of specific data. And a static variable or function is usually non-specific to a certain user or view controller or view generally. So one thing I do want to say quickly is that Static variables do not need to be constants. So a lot of these examples, we're talking about like constants, like here and where this, uh, in a table you saw, where this identifier will never change. It doesn't actually need to be a constant. I don't remember the last place I used a static variable and not a static let, but if you take a look, we can say levels dot high score. This is the commonly used example. And then we could say levels, dot high score equals two and we can again print out levels dot high score and if we run that it will update the static variable so as you can see here it will update it if we change it but i just don't see this used very often and you probably won't be using it too often but just good to know so if this helped out please like and subscribe peace